Hello and welcome to another gameplay video of Magic the Gathering Arena. I'm Luis Diaz and this is Learning the Gathering. As always, I'd like to take a second at the beginning and end of every video to say thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to view my videos and look at my content. If you like the content that I'm putting out, feel free to subscribe to the channel and like the videos and share among anybody who you think might enjoy the content as well. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video. In the last video, I believe I said that we would be taking a look at the mono white deck that I had created. Um, I haven't used it since I made it, honestly. I played it a couple times that day and then stopped. I didn't even give it a name. So let's see what we're working with again. Okay, I believe um, this deck relies on Lifelink, Bastry's Acolyte, um, a lot of clerics, Skyclave. We have Shrine Keeper, which is a 2 2 for 2 white. Luminarch Aspirin. This thing is crazy. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1 1 counter on target creature you control. So, the turn that you put this thing out, if it doesn't get uh, counterspelled or um, spot removed, it's, it's already jumping up to a 2 2. So, it's a 1 1 that as soon as you play it, it's a 2 2 once you get to the combat phase. Um. If it's the only card you're putting out there. You can play it as soon as turn two. For one generic and one white. And it's just a solid card to have. I have two of them in this deck. Hallowed Priest. To um, benefit from any lifelink that we do have. We have Chorister for that. Um, Drenith Healer technically. But I don't have any cycle cards except for that one. So I do have four copies. I can cycle one for... One life to boost Hallow Priest if I have to, but this one gets lifelink as long as there's another cleric in under my control, which again this is mostly cleric, so of course celebrants every time this card or another creature enters the battlefield under your control you gain a life. So we have ways to get life. Um I don't remember this deck doing bad at all. So let's go ahead and play a couple games with it and see how we do. I will say that um, today I have been playing. I played a bit in the morning before work and I played a little bit after work. Um, and I've just been getting my ass handed to me, honestly. I've tried the Obosh deck. I won one game out of like three with that one. I tried the Cat deck. I lost like the two or three games that I played with that. I lost my two mill games. I actually want to play that deck for you guys. If not in this video, then the next video. So yeah, I've just been taking L's all day. I think I won one mat. Yeah, I won one game with the Obosh deck, but that's about it. So yeah. Honestly, I don't know. It's like okay, not a bad hand. It's like all the sweats and the tryhards come out during the weekend. It is Saturday, so. And that's the other thing. I've been going second in like all of my matches. I don't want to cycle. It's annoying having to like manually skip all that. And I know you can switch to auto, or at least I think you can, but I don't know, I guess I'd prefer to manually tap, even though it does annoy me. I don't know. It just makes the game clunky when you have a card you can play as an instant, but you don't want to. I can't get mad. I do that to so many people, Frogify. Frogify might honestly be my favorite blue card. 
It's definitely fun to throw it on an opponent's creature. What is this thing? I don't know what this thing is. Combat Professor. Okay. Yeah, so we can do that. Creature. I don't think. Hey, that's not all right. Let's throw out a couple two twos. It's looking like this person just doesn't really have much to put out there besides basic lands. Either that or they're just really only have the higher mana cards, which means we're going to be in trouble soon. Alright, see I put that plus one on that orator specifically to bait that that block. But what he could have done was concede, I guess. I was gonna say what he could have done was block the two two orator, that way his creature wouldn't have to die. And then block the three three on the next turn. Or the three two, because it would have done it again. But GG's. So yeah, that's really good to get a win again. I mean, like I said, it's been rare today. Rare wins today. <clears throat> Excuse me. That was a good stretch. If you're wondering why it's so quiet, I, sh I shut the music off to um, make it a little easier to hear the commentary. So that's why. We'll do one more with this one, and I think we'll have time for the mill deck. The, the issue is that the mill deck doesn't have strong creatures. It's either like big defenders like Ruin Crab with 0 3 or Merfolk Secret Keeper. Merfolk Secret Keeper, which is a 0 4 body. And then like a bunch of 1 1s and 2 1 1 2s. Nothing really big, so. If the opponent gets bigger than us, then it's, it, it gives us a real problem. This is good. A lot of clerics and lifelink and, and a hallowed priest to benefit from that. So next turn, Halopree should definitely get a 1-1, one, one, plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Banishing Light. Nice little bit of removal there. Not only for creatures, but enchantments as well. Beautiful. 
And these clerics can really start clicking together. See, so right there, that's usually a problem. Because most decks I run don't have a way to get rid of that. But we have it in Banishing Light. So that's a waste of mana on his turn. And here we have a dilemma. And that is, do we want to remove the enchantment from Hallowed Priest? Or use the Banishing Light to get rid of that 1-1 one, one token? But we're gonna actually, yeah. And after a quick second of pondering, the easy choice is passive vision. Because with this attack, we're going to get Hallowed Priest to a 5 5. So even if he does put Questing Beast out. We'll at the very least be able to um, like force it to block and oh no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, that kind of screwed us up a bit, but that's okay. We'll throw these three cards out. I wonder what he's sitting on over there. Maybe all the glitters? He can't block with that one. Because then Quest and Beast wouldn't be able to attack. Quest and Beast. That's so sad, that crying sound that they play when you play a Questing Beast card. I mean, sorry, not Questing Beast, Lovestruck Beast. Wow. Somebody screwed me up with a uh, questing beast earlier and it clearly hasn't left my consciousness <sighs> so we're gonna lose two cause I'm gonna save these and block that love struck beast and if he has a way to make it bigger like a spell to make it bigger when we do block then we're in trouble Or no, you know what? We'll just let him through him, bang him for eight. And now we can fly right over the top of him. All we need is one more land. I mean, really, I really hope we do get a land now, because that's really all we need to start. Mm, excuse me. That's really all we need to really start doing work here. Ah. And it, mean, it figures that the one time I'm actually asking for a land is the one time it's going to be hard for me to get one. <sighs> Alright. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Wow. Okay. See what I mean? This is annoying. I'm asked when I get mana screwed. I mean, when I get like mana flooded, all I do is ask for creatures, right? Because you're mana flooded, you got too much mana, not enough creature cards. 
So... I'm getting creature flooded here. I didn't know that that card could do that, so that's good to know. See, now we've had three draws. All we needed was one, one planes card. And we just don't have it. So being mana screwed isn't just about, like, having too much mana. It's also having not enough. Like, it works both ways. And this might be a case of a little too late. You know, too little too late. Good thing is, though, he doesn't have any flyers. And Hallowed Priest is starting to grow. We get it. We get it. Stop flexing. Are you serious? That is broken. What? That is broken. Whenever this thing attacks, you... Other creatures you control gain double strike until the end of turn. That is so broken. Who does that? Who came up with that? You know what? We're doing this. You want to go hard? Let's go hard. Let's go hard, bro. There's one down. Two down. Three down. Four. Five. Six. That's how you turn it around. Let's go. That's fine with me, buddy. This is crazy. It went from like him being up to us taking over to like a split second later. He just wipes the board like and now we're down again. What sucks is that's about as good as we could have gotten. I mean, I don't think we have any more in our bag right now. We still have 47 cards, so plenty of creatures up. I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, he has two visions creatures out. So we could just let him keep attacking for now until we hope, you know, hopefully get something going. I don't. Let's 
See, and now we're just getting mana now. Now that we need creatures, all we're getting is lands. If I could get another 2-2 two -two body out, then we could get rid of that uh, Sentinel Spider. Here we go, I forgot we had this card. Alright, that's it. This should be game, honestly. And we're not even gonna bother. Double blocking this thing, we're just gonna get big. Because we have plenty of turns. We have plenty of time, plenty of health. See, that person knew it was just a matter of time. I forgot we had Lumamark. Luminark, Lumamark, Luminark. Luma Lumamancer. This card is Lumamark. Luminark. Okay. So clutch that card. Single handedly saved our ass. That really was a good game, though. GG's. Um, I'm not going to try to press the issue with another match, so that actually works out. Yeah, that works out because now that just means tomorrow's video will be the mill deck. Like I was saying though, I mean, it's fun. It's so fun to mill people. I think we all know that. But most of the times, my opponent either will buy... What was it? There was a set that I actually realized was really good. I think it was Eldrain. Yeah, there was a couple cards in Eldrain that I wanted to get. I can't remember what they are right now. But if we pull one... Oh, definitely not. But yeah, the thing about that mill deck is most of the time the wins come from people conceding because they just don't want to deal with the mill deck. So they just quit the match as soon as they see like Rune Crab out there or that I'm milling them every turn for like, even if it is like two cards or whatever. But if they actually... If I don't draw Soaring Thought Thief, right? Because that's really the only ones... The only card that I have that can be like a 3-3 or whatever. Um, if I don't draw those, then really I got nothing bigger than that in my deck. So it's just hoping to mill them enough to disrupt their flow so that they don't get anything good. Or just annoy them enough to make them concede. Like, this, the deck doesn't win because you're beating these guys in combat. Never. Never at all. But that's not what mill decks are for. Mill decks are for being a dick and annoying your opponent. Into quitting. <laughs> I think in all the times I've been running mill decks, I've only milled somebody's deck once. And then there was the guy that I posted on my Instagram. I actually shouted him out and gave him GGs because he stayed when I was like milling him 10, 10 cards every turn. He stayed until he had 9 cards left in his deck and then he conceded. But like if I was him, I definitely would have conceded a long time ago. Like there was just no reason for him to stay in that match. The only thing he played that whole match was two Elysian and Karyotids. So... All right, let's open this pack, call it a day, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. So here we go. There we go. So Wishful Merfolk, I actually posted that on my Instagram the other day. Um, Venerable Knight, that's what it was. The knights and stuff from this from this set are what wanted me to start pulling from here. 
Happily Ever After. So there's Once Upon a Time, which I know got banned, and apparently there's Happily Ever After. When Happily Ever After enters the battlefield, each player gains five life and draws a card. Okay, well that's not fair. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors among permanents you control, which is never going to be the case, there are six or more card types among permanents you control and or graves and or cards in your graveyard and your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total you win the game that's a lot of things to have lined up in your favor you have to have five creatures or five different color permanents under your control right boom that's one just just on the battlefield with like your enchantments and creatures or whatever you have to have five different colors right that's a lot to ask for then on top of that you have to have six or more card types among permanents you control and or cards in your graveyard. So either cards in your graveyard or types of permanents you control or any combination of the two, right? So that's a little more leeway. But again, having five five different colors on the field or in your graveyard, whatever, having five different colors is, is kind of difficult. And then your life total has to be greater than or equal to your starting life total. So while all this, while you're trying to piece together all this stuff, you have to either not take damage or, you know, get your life total back up to 20 if you do take damage. That's a lot of asking for this card. We have a Witch's Cottage, which I might start to um, return to nature. Yeah, we might throw that Witch's Cottage in a deck. But yeah, that's it for the, today's video. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to make this quick. Once again, thank you for tuning in and uh, giving, you, giving me your time watching my videos. I appreciate all the support. Um, if you like the content that I'm putting out, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I can't talk right now. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos and share the content. I appreciate all the support. I really do. Tune in tomorrow. I will post another video with that mill deck. I'm not promising any wins because it's not really a winning formula for my deck. But we're going to have fun. See if we can annoy some people and get some victories that way. So thank you for tuning in and I hope you have a